I'm gonna show you how to do this technique two different ways. The first version is going to be within, whoa, Premiere Pro. The second way is gonna be, wow, within After Effects. Now keep in mind, everything that I teach you about doing this inside Premiere Pro is hopefully going to become obsolete within the next six months to a year because during Adobe Max 2024, Adobe gave us a sneak peek at a new tool called the Object Masking Tool or something like that, where natively inside Premiere Pro, we are finally getting the option to click on an object and have Premiere Pro automatically mask and track a mask to an object all within the program. You don't have to go to After Effects to do it. If that's already in the program, check out that tutorial. I'll have it linked somewhere on the screen. If that isn't out yet, then just continue to watch this video. So let's show you how to do it in Premiere Pro first, then we'll hop over to After Effects. So we're gonna go to our video clip that's on the bottom layer or V1. And on Mac, I'm gonna hold Option and on Windows, I believe it's Alt, but I'm gonna hold that, click and drag it up to the clip above my text. So my text has disappeared. And now we're going to mask this out. In order to do so, I'm going to click on the clip that is on V3, go to opacity. And we have three options here for masking at this point in time, ellipse mask, polygon mask, and the free draw bezier. Now, if this was some other shape, you would use your pen tool and draw around the object like this. One tip for using the Bezier tool is if you click and drag, you'll get handles. But if you just do a normal click, it will be a straight line. But because this is almost a sphere, I mean, there's a little bit of warping here. I'm just going to use the ellipse mask. So I'm going to delete this and go to create ellipse mask. Now I can click and drag this wherever I need to. If you want a perfect circle, hold shift and click one of the points and start dragging. It will turn your ellipse mask into a perfect circle. This isn't exactly a perfect circle, but I'm gonna kind of line this up. At this point in time, this side doesn't concern me as much as what this side is going to do because that's the part that's going to be revealing the text. So I'm gonna zoom in here. I've already created my mask, but what I like to do is go in steps of five frames. And this is a tip that has saved me a lot of time. If you were to go to Premiere Pro and settings, and this is in Mac, so if you were in Windows, I believe that's under file, but just your settings part, and we're gonna go to playback. And here, we're gonna look at our step forward back many. So for me, that is five frames. You can change this to however many frames you want to. For me, I find that a good setting is five frames. So I'm gonna hit okay. And if you were to hold shift in your arrow keys, so shift over, this will skip five frames, which will help us here as we're creating our mask. I find that doing a mask every single frame can get one, really tedious, and two, it might look not as smooth because you're adjusting it every single frame. So what I like to do is hold shift and go over five frames. Now I'm going to click on the word mask so this appears again, and I am going to move it. So for right now, I'm gonna hold shift and move my mask. It looks like we still haven't revealed the text, which is okay, but you can tell that right when I moved my mask, it created a keyframe for me automatically. I'm going to move another five frames, move my mask over, and it looks like we're starting to reveal that T. So now I can really adjust just how the mask looks. In order to get a detailed look, I'm going to zoom in by using my middle scroll wheel on the program monitor when it's selected. So I'm seeing that this is cutting in even though I'm, I'm allowing a little bit too much right here. So I'm gonna grab my pen tool and bring it in ever so slightly because this isn't a perfect sphere. So I'm just going to adjust it a little bit so it acts how I want it to. Now I'm going to move five more frames. And one thing to know is if I were to hold shift and over, it actually moves my mask. So what I suggest doing, if you do a lot of this, is going back up to your settings in your keyboard shortcuts and look up step 
many, step many frames back and forth. So here is the default. It's shift left, shift right. But what I've done is I've actually put this on my number pad on three and two. You could do this however you want to in your setup. So you could set it up to any of these. But I find that this is helpful because now when I hit three or two on my number pad, it will skip through the frames. That way I don't have to go over here, click out, hold shift, go over one and then go back to my mask, click my mask and move my mask. No, I can always have manipulation of my mask and just hit three on my number pad and move five frames into the future. And also Premiere Pro is set up if you hold down the middle scroll wheel, you're able to grab the monitor, much like if you were holding spacebar in After Effects, and move the screen. I'll just fast forward here because I'm sure you understand the concept of what I'm doing by now. I think it's looking all right for the time being. So in order to get rid of this before the ball gets there, go to your effects tab and look up crop. Just drop that onto your text layer, and then you would Click on the word crop so you see these lines and just adjust your crop for the text as the ball goes through. So what I would do is bring the crop to about right here. So the crop follows the midline. I will go to my right, toggle on information, select the word crop again, go through to about right here. And let's see if this works. It looks like it does a pretty decent job. There you go because I've kind of set this up so I could change this to whatever I need it to. I could maybe ask you for a like, and that's a longer word, but look at this. It still works. Like so. Let's move this on over to After Effects. I'm gonna use the same clip. So here is that clip inside my project window. I'm just gonna click and drag it over this composition icon to create a new composition with all the right settings from that clip. As you can see, it's right here. Since this is After Effects, there are a plethora of ways to mask out this ball. I actually wanna go up here to the Roto Brush tool and use it for this example, because I think it will work the best. So if I click this, the little person with the brush, and try and click on here, it won't do anything. That's because you have to double click on the clip and work on the clip itself. Right now we're only working on the composition. So I'm gonna double click on my clip and we get to a screen like this. I can move this around and I'm working on just the layer of the clip. And all I need to do with the Roto brush is click and just kind of tell it what I want it to mask out. And I just did a little line around the ball right there telling After Effects, hey, I want you to look at this ball. And there we go. Now, some of you may also be dealing with a more complex object and you're gonna be rotoscoping more than just a ball here. So let's say I accidentally got some of my shadow or you wanted to get some of the shadow and then you thought to yourself, oh, I didn't wanna rotoscope the shadow. So in order to delete some of this, all you need to do on Mac is hold option. And I believe you hold alt on Windows, click and drag and that will get rid of that like so. We have now, mask this so I could click and drag the playhead or I can just hit play and it will mask it as long as it's in the shot. I'll go over here to the beginning of the shot and it's propagating to where the playhead is. If I play this through, you can see it's done a pretty good job. So my hope for the future of Premiere Pro is to have a feature similar to this, but even more user friendly, just a one click option that gives us this masked that's tracked to our object because it's pretty cool. Now, one thing I did not do is add my text layer. I also did not duplicate my layer. So when I go back to my composition like this, we just have the ball that's masked out. So I need to do a couple things. I'm first going to duplicate my layer. So I'll highlight this and just hit Command D to duplicate it. But that also duplicated my Roto brush. I only need the Roto brush on the top clip. So I'm gonna go to this bottom one and just delete my Roto brush altogether. I need to add my text back in. So I'll click this, hello. And we already have the ball going in front of the word, but I do want it to reveal. And for this one, I'm gonna highlight the word, go to my rectangle tool, and I'll just click and drag and create a rectangle for the word to reveal itself. On this, I'm going to go to subtract, right next to mask underneath my text. 
and then I need to adjust the path. So I'm going to click that. And just like before, I'll go to the selection tool, move it forward just a little bit, move my line like so. And let's see if it follows it. Does a pretty good job of masking it out or revealing that word as it passes through. And that is just one way of revealing a word from behind an object inside After Effects. If this video was helpful, don't forget to leave that like. My name is Javier Mercedes, and I hope you're out there living a life of abundance.